Hello and welcome back to another lecture with Professor Love here. Um, today we are talking about section 1.2 in the pre-calculus textbook on exponentials and radicals. And to start us off, we're going to go ahead and just have the definition of what an exponential is. So um, an exponential, <clears throat> essentially with an integer, uh, with an integer exponent, is something that makes uh, the writing of repeated multiplication more succinct. So if we have a number like two times two times two times two times two times two, instead of writing out this big long string of twos multiplied together, if we wanted to somehow count or account for how many twos have been multiplied together, we could write this using something called a base, that'd be two, and the exponent, which is the number of bases that are multiplied together. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is what we call the exponent or the power. Uh, two to the sixth is an exponential. Um, and as you can see, it, it's a nice short way of writing repeated multiplication down, um, just like addition repeatedly can be more succinctly written as multiplication, right? Uh, it, it's a formal way of rewriting something uh, in a simpler way. Um, it, you know, it, you can think of this similarly with decimal exponents, but things get a little bit hazy from there on. So uh, we'll talk about a few rules in today's video uh, to help you work out what to do with different exponents, how to simplify exponents, change negative exponents into positive ones. Um, just a few rules uh, with exponentials. Now, in general, uh, instead of just as uh, an example here, in general, an exponential is something that looks like this. It's a function that has a base. I'll use the letter B here for the base. This is a number raised to some power. Now, I'm going to put X here, but it, it doesn't have to be like that. An exponential function is just a constant base raised to some variable power. Okay, we're going to deal with these a lot later on in this course uh, with, for things like investments and interest um, and debt. Uh, but for now, we're just, going to, we're just going to say that both the base and the exponent and power, they're constants. Because today, we're going to learn a bunch of rules that deal with constants instead of variable powers. But the same ideas apply if the exponent is a variable. So this is an exponential function, okay? Um, there's two sort of special cases of exponential functions uh, that are a little bit weirder than others. And they are, what if you have a zero exponent? You know, according to the definition, I said the exponent, the power, is how many of the bases you have multiplied together. So interpret that, interpret this, two to the zero. What is that? It's zero twos multiplied together. So what does it equal? Well, there's sort of a, a tricky thing you can do. You can make the power of two go to zero, right? You can, you can sort of look at what happens if you take two to the 10th and then two to the ninth, and then we'll skip a few, two to the first, which is one, two multiplied together, which is clearly two and then start doing stranger things. Two to the one tenth power. And keep that going all the way down to zero. You're gonna find a pattern. You're gonna find that this eventually gets really, 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 really close to the result that we're looking for here. One, two to the zeroth is one. So I. If you have a calculator, go ahead and do that little exercise. It's a good example of something called a limiting exercise. And that's uh, something you're going to talk about in calculus all the time. So uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. Um, so it turns out any number that's not 0, any number that's not 0, raised to the 0th power, so any base b raised to the 0th power is 1, so long as that base is not 0. Okay, zero to the zeroth, we're going to leave for the calculus teachers. <laughs> okay. Um, 
something we call indeterminism, but we'll, we'll, I'll leave that for your calculus professor. The other thing that I wanted to talk about here is what to do with negative exponents, right? So we could have two to the negative one. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's, it's really quite simple, actually. The, when you see a negative power like that in an exponential function, two to the negative one, all it really means is to take the reciprocal of that and change the sign on that power, right? So two to the negative one becomes one over two to the first. Two to the negative seventh becomes one over two to the negative seventh, uh, two to the positive seventh. You change that sign. So whatever the number is, it becomes positive. And then the two to the seventh goes into the bottom, into the denominator. We're gonna learn some rules here in just a second to, to work with things like this. That's just a quick example of it. But in general, if you have any base to a negative power, that's the same as one over the base to the positive power, right? So just two quick rules. We're about to get into lots more for how to manipulate these things and how to work with them, how to simplify fractions and things like that. So those are just two quick, simple, sort of uh, stranger cases of exponents. So there are seven uh, laws that we're gonna go through here for exponents. And then we're gonna talk about a really common uh, form of exponential uh, that you'll see, see all over the sciences, um, in particular in chemistry and in physics. Uh, certainly, and in biology, I suppose, too, um, but it all, it's all over the sciences. So the first law tells us what to do if we have two exponentials multiplied together when they have the same base. So let's take base one times uh, to the nth power times the second exponential with the same base. It's the same number to any power. So what do you do in a situation like this? You know, you can think about like two squared times two cubed. What should we do there? Um, you could think about the definition here. Two squared is two times two. Two cubed is two times two times two. It's three of them multiplied together. So to write this succinctly, we just count the twos. There's five of them. So this is two to the fifth. It appears like we just added the exponents. And in general, that is the, the rule. Two exponentials multiplied together with the same base is the same as one exponential to the sum of those powers. Okay, one exponential where the base is raised to the sum of those powers, n plus m. Second law is what to do if you've got a fraction of exponentials with the same base? Well, you might guess that instead of adding, we're going to subtract, and you would be right, right? It's multiplication and division, they're inverse operations, right? So when you multiply something, well, you can undo that by dividing it. So if exponentials are multiplied together and that results in adding the exponents, well, then maybe we could just divide by something to subtract the exponents. That's exactly what we do. So we have b to the n, that's the, that's the exponent uh, of the top exponential there, minus m, that's the power of the, the bottom exponential. Okay. So a numerical example would be three to the seventh over three to the second. Right? We can multiply all this out. We could put this into a calculator and figure it out. But the end result is going to be, we're going to have three to the seven minus two, which is three to the fifth. Right? That's the second law of exponents. The next one that we're looking at is what to do with an exponential raised to a power. So what if the base, what if the base of an exponential is an exponential? Or in the other direction, how to turn an exponential with just a base and a power into sort of a, a nested exponential, 
where you've got a exponential base. And this one's not too tricky. We think about the definition here, right? M of these bases are multiplied together. B to the N, B to the N, dot, 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 B to the N. We have M of them multiplied together. Rule number one says when we have exponentials multiplied together, we add exponents, so long as the bases are the same. So we're adding N together M times. That's an M there at the end, uh, an N there at the end, excuse me. Well, repeated addition is, is the same as multiplication. If we take N thing, we take M Ns, we add them all together, that's the same as M times N, right? So this is the third law that if you have a, an exponential as the base, we can apply rule one to say that this is the same as the product of the exponents as the power of the base. Base doesn't change. You just take the product of the uh, product of the exponents. That's the third law. Now, all of these laws so far have dealt strictly with exponents uh, being added, subtracted, or multiplied with a single base. Right? The product of two similar exponentials. What do we do if the exponentials have dissimilar or different bases? That's the next set of rules. So rule number four is this. What if you have a base that is a compound number? You could think of something really, really simple like six squared. Six is two times three. So let's write it like that. So that it has the same format as our rule here. Uh, well, this rule says that the compound number raised to a base is equivalent, it's the same as distributing across that multiplication the power. We could check this, right? Six squared, we know that to be 36, I hope. I hope we have our multiplication tables memorized out to 50. Um, on the right side, this is four times nine. Four times nine is in fact 36. So, you know, in sort of sort of a computational manner here, this pattern that we see in the computations uh, is just that the powers on exponentials uh, distribute to the factors of the base. So you, to, to write that instead of say that is again, the, the power of the compound base distributes to the factors of the base. No matter how many factors there are, right? A times B times C times D times E, we factor the base completely and then we can just distribute the power to every single factor like that. Okay. Uh, okay, that's that's the fourth law. And this one is sort of strange. We're dealing with still one exponential, but we're splitting it into two based on the factors of the base. Um, this is sort of a tool to use, right? Uh, something that you can usually do it in reverse. You take, uh, you're splitting something apart. Uh, you're dealing with one exponential, you're turning it into more in order usually to simplify a situation for easier calculation, something to reduce the number of steps that you have to take in your final computation. Um, the next one, very similar, just like before, we're gonna deal with a base that is a fraction. Um, and this is, this is no different. You're going to still distribute the power 
to the factors of this quotient, this fraction. Because in terms of like number four, you can think of number five as this. You can think of it as a over b is the same as a times one over b. So we've turned a over b into the product of two factors. And rule four says, well, you just distribute the, the power to each factor, right? So it really number five and number four, like they're equivalent statements. Um, and you can use number five in strange ways sometimes. Like let's say we have six squared. Well, number five says what we can, we can do is we can do it like this. Six is the same as 12 over two. And that's the same as 12 squared over four or two squared. Right, so 144 divided by four is apparently equal to 36, six squared. Right, so you can do strange things like that, or you know, oftentimes you can use this for the greater good to simplify a problem overall. It doesn't change the fact that the pattern exists. The next one <clears throat> says what to do if you've got a negative exponent on a fraction. I'll let you just think about that. So we've got a fractional base raised to a negative exponent. The rule we saw earlier said to do this. Change the sign, put it in the denominator. Rule number five says that we can distribute that power, right? So let's do that. One over a to the n over b to the n. So this is a, a compound fraction now. You've seen this before. We're gonna multiply by one to change how this fraction looks. That one is going to be a one like this. A one that changes the denominator into a one. <laughs> Right, we multiply a to the n over b to the n times b to the n over a to the n, and those things both cancel. This gives us the final result that we're looking for, that, that this fraction to a negative exponent is the same as the reciprocal of the exponent to the positive power. Yeah. I skipped a step in there. I, I inserted step number five, power law number five there to rewrite that. But more or less, this final statement is just, if you see a negative exponent on a fraction like this, you can rewrite it like so. Just flip the fraction and change the sign on the exponent. Okay. The final law, number seven, is more or less that exact same thing. And it has to deal with how you can move uh, just like number one, uh, sorry, just like number, uh, oh, it was the, not number one, number zero, just like this one. It has to do with how you can move factors uh, in the numerator or denominator around. You can move things from the bottom to the top or things from the top down into the bottom. So rule number seven is if you've got a to the negative n over b to the negative m, feel free to move these things around in the top and bottom in terms of moving them through products up and down. Uh, if you've got sums or differences in the numerators or denominators, this gets a little trickier. So we can essentially do it like this, b to the m, a to the n. Now, that actually happens in sort of a roundabout way using the other properties, a to the negative n over b to the negative m. We're going to multiply that by sort of a, a, an interesting thing here, a to the n over a to the n. That's one, no matter what a is, unless a is zero. And so up top, what do we get? We get 
a to the zeroth, right? You add the exponents because the bases are the same. So this is a to the zeroth over a to the n. Now it's positive times b to the negative m. This up here is just one. A to the zeroth is just one. We're halfway there. We're going to multiply again by b to the m over b to the m. We're going to rinse and repeat what we just did. Because now we've got b to the m times b to the negative m. They have the same base. So we can add the exponents and we get b to the zeroth in the denominator, which is just one. So we have up top b to the m times one. That was the a to the zero from before. So I'm gonna erase that. Divided by a to the n times b to the zeroth. But that's also one. So I'm gonna erase that. And that's our result. This multiplication by one, this is something that you, it, it's a skill that you can develop really, really well, I think, uh, and really quickly. But it's hard to see it. Like, when should you use it? So uh, don't worry. You'll get practice before long. Um, with those seven laws, uh, we're going to move into a, a huge application of exponentials and uh, these laws in particular. So it's scientific notation. It's something that you see in physics classes all the time. It's something that you see in chemistry classes all the time. Um, and really, it's, you know, outside of science, outside of laboratories, I'm not exactly sure how often you see this sort of thing. Um, but uh, it definitely, definitely in the sciences and the engineering world comes up. It comes up so often that, you know, people in the past have come up with prefixes like uh, uh, kilo or centi, right? We think about a meter and a meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Uh, so we would come up with these prefixes to really shorten scientific notations down. But behind everything, what we're dealing with is exponentials that look like this. Some number times 10 to a power. Okay. Now we have this requirement for scientific notation that A is actually a number between 1 and 10. Okay, if A were a number that was bigger than 10, what we would do is we would divide it by 10 and just increase the exponent by one. Okay, if A was actually smaller than one, we would multiply it by one and reduce 10 by one in kind. So scientific notation is all numbers that are written like this. Um, and so I, what are some things, what are some common examples of scientific uh, numbers that come up. Let's go with the mass of the earth. So that's, that's a common thing. Like how much does the world have in terms of matter? How much mass does it have? Uh, well, this is the scientific number for it. Uh, thanks to Wikipedia, 5.972. Notice that this is bigger than one and less than 10 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Okay, so this is a perfect example of scientific notation. Um, what if I wanted to convert that, right, to grams? You know, what is the point? Why is scientific notation so great? Uh, well, it's because working with exponentials is so much easier, more succinct too, than writing out 25 numbers. So if I wanted to convert this to grams, for example, we need to remember that there's a thousand grams in every kilogram, right? So essentially we're going to take this number, we're going to multiply it by a thousand times, oops, I already wrote that, times a thousand. Because every one of those kilograms is a thousand grams. But a thousand is the same as 10 to the third, isn't it? So the end result here is this number 5.972 times 10 to the 24th times 10 to the third. 
but we just learned how to handle things like this. Oops, undo the erasure, highlight. This is the same as step one, right? When you're multiplying numbers that are in scientific notation, you apply number one and you've got your result right away. We say they have the same base, so we add the exponents. So 5.972 times 10 to the 27th kilogram, uh, grams, excuse me. That's the mass of the earth in grams. No calculator needed, just add the exponents. It's that simple. Uh, you could talk about scientific notation numbers all the time uh, in chemistry as well with things such as atomic radii. Uh, you could talk about um, atomic mass, things like this, uh, amount of energy, um, right? And all sorts of constants deal with scientific notation too. The gravitational constant, the Boltzmann constant, Planck's constant, all these different constants. They're either ridiculously small or ridiculously large numbers. And so scientific notation is used heavily um, with those things. And it just simplifies computations out. Um, okay, it's a, it's a great application of them. Um, and with that, we're done with the first portion of section 1.2. We're going to continue on in section 1.2 dealing with radicals next. So I hope you join me for the next video. Thanks for stopping in.